I invented world music and I was the first person to use plasticine in a video and really employ a lot of black people to sing in the background. I have it on very good authority that none of the members of Take That can read or write. I mean, can you imagine N-dubs doing a crossword or Lethal Bizzle working at Compass? It's sad, but many young bands come to record here and they have no idea how to use stationery properly. Let's just put out a greatest hits. We did that last year, didn't we? Yeah, except you insisted there were no hits on. I've wanted to work with animals in this way for years. I get the chance to actually play live underwater to different types of fish. Zogu was my lover when I, I was 15. That, she's joking. I'm joking, I was 14. What are you doing? It's not a game! Go and get a bath! So Sting, take that. Out! Out! What are you doing filming this peasant? Get out! I would like to smash your face! It's an audience with John Barryman. I've got a seating plan here. You can either go between... Anne Widdicombe and Steve Cram, or Todd Carty and Ross Kemp. I'm not sitting next to that big gorilla. Right, I'll put you next to Ross Kemp then. My manager, John Farrell, popped by. John and I have our ups and downs, uh, but we always make up in the end. We're a bit like a married couple, but, you know, without the sex. BBC Four. Well, Yentob, come fuck off. This concert goes out live on BBC One or not at all. No, we got Nelson Mandela, you two, Whoopi Gold, and a fucking sugar babes, for Christ's sake. No, no, if every BBC4 viewer gave a we were lucky to get enough to buy one packet of Johnny's. Tell him to fuck off, really. So, John, what's all this talk about a crisis media? I don't like that word crisis, you know. To me, a crisis is uh, global warming. Well, what's all this about? Oh, that's just for the website. Don't, 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 don't ignore it. Crisis is just a word, right? I mean, it's not exactly a crisis yet. On the verge, you know. Fans here, shit's about here. I'm just in the process of trying to stop one hitting the other. OK. A uh, couple of things. EMI are asking after the new album. Um, they want it delivered mid-October to be on the shelves by Christmas. Well, as you know, John, I don't believe in Christmas, so I would rather not rush it and release it when it's ready. And when will that be? I would probably say around between seven or eight years. Music, as we know, it won't even exist by then. It'll have been replaced by robots or something. Great. They do a better job than most of today's bands. Can you do it any quicker? Look, John, I don't know what the big deal's all about. Well, the big deal, Brian, is the big deal. You signed for $8 million to deliver four albums in six years. That was in 92. And since then, you've delivered one which sold less than 200,000 copies. I did what the record company told me, and I did a promotional tour. You did a promotional tour, Brian, of school halls in South America. I was trying to reach a different audience. Well, the audience who reached eat millet three times a day and sacrifice their children to the waterfall every time it rains. I've been taking a break from recording this month as we are having a new Monk Ram Arbitus Moog Quasi system fitted into the mainframe at Pogol Studios. It was designed by Barry Schrader at Keeble Sound in Oxford and they're only three made every two years and I'm lucky enough to have got hold of one. Sting tried gazumping me on the price but luckily money is not Barry's god and he told him to sod off. So Sting, take that. Why don't you go and make some wine or whatever it is you do now. You'll probably find it easier to blend Merlot and Sangiovese than jazz and rock as your solo career has demonstrated. What you can see behind me is the mixing desk at Sogol Sound, which is my little studio deep in Soho, where it all goes on. Uh, funny enough, just down the road uh, in another studio, Pat Quid is uh, working on some tracks for his new solo album. You know Pat as well as I do. He was in Thoch with me. I found a member and we go back a long, long way. Uh, we fell out about 12 years ago when he sued me over some royalties. Uh, I then countersued him over some more royalties and then we had a bit of a ding-dong uh, in the European Court of Human Rights over the name Thotch. Uh, but that's all water under the bridge now and we're friends. I have to go. I'm uh, seeing a man about uh, something. So I'm going to go. Yep. Hello there, Brian here. Thanks for logging into my noggin for my latest blogging. You must forgive me, 
Sue, who runs my website, asked me to record my latest webcast as live. As I've just returned from the UK Hall of Fame Awards, in which I've been inducted. Cheers. As you can see from my tongue, we've had a very happy night. Myself and many others, uh, Bob Plant, uh, Rog Taylor, uh, Sue Quattro and Bo, all performed live at the Empire. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's been a long time since I drank so much and my head is beginning to spin. A highlight for me was being awarded uh, the award by the award-winning director Ridley Scott, who is a big fan of my music. I'm not a fan of his films post Blade Runner, but Alien is one of my top three Alien films. Ridley has asked me to perform at his 73rd birthday. Russell Crowe will be there, Tony Hopkins, Harrison Ford and Thelma and Louise. Sadly, I can't make it as I have a new washing machine being delivered and I have to stay in and sign for it. It's one of those things we can't get a babysitter. The last one logged into my computer and started sending rude things to another girl and she wasn't even good looking but I think they were lesbians. It was great to see my old pals from Thudge at the weekend. They were inducted three years ago. I was asked to perform with them at the time, and as you know, I couldn't make it, as my mother was having a dishwasher delivered at that time and asked if I could stay in and sign for that too. She was on holiday. Uh, she went to Corfu, didn't rain too much, but she unfortunately began her menopause one day, and that sort of kind of ruined the holiday for her. Lolly sticks, a figure moves beneath the water. Come in, number seven, your time's up. Did we? No go. No stop. I'm sitting with a lady named Majita. Uh, she's Albanian. Uh, we first met when uh, I was touring in Albania, well, I was touring in Greece and Turkey, but we tried to do a gig in Albania, which was cancelled, and I heard that this beautiful voice in a park one day... <laughs> I looked around, and there was this lady sitting on a bench, and she's got one hell of a set of pipes. Um, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we did a record together, uh, which was crushed by the regime there, and mm -hmm. one time we were trying to get her to defect to mm -hmm. London, and then uh, after I got to know her, I thought, actually, no. We knew not. each other. Zogu was my lover when I, I was 15. That's, she's joking. I'm joking. I was 14. Beneath the broken boats, lolly sticks. A figure swims. I know you were waiting, I know you were waiting for me. I am Albania number one singer songwriter female. Later I'm going on the John Peel sessions. You'll have trouble doing that, I'm afraid he's dead. No. Mr. Peel dead. Yes, Peel has died. Peel, <laughs> Peel is dead. Then I will go on Zane Law. Yeah, you get on there easy enough. Why are you doing this to me again? <laughs> and all this with fucking Judy Covington. Who <laughs> is Judy Covington? She was in rock follies! <laughs> She's a bitch! What is rock folly? A television drama about three girls in a fictional band! <laughs> it was rubbish! <laughs> is it on DVD? No! No one would watch that shit again! <laughs> Come on, I've gone too far. It's okay. We've got to get you to the code station. We bonk? No bonk. I am very excited to be working on a soundtrack for Steve Soderbergh's new film called Des, which is due to open the Cannes Film Festival. It's a biopic of a great man, Desmond Tutu, split into two movies. Uh, part one concentrates on the first 30 years of his life when he was just Desmond, and part two will be concentrating on when he becomes Desmond Tutu. Now, he will be played by the fantastic actor Michael Sheen. Michael Sheen is one of the greatest actors of his generation. You've obviously seen him playing Tony Blair, uh, Kenneth Williams, David Frost, uh, Brian Clough. Uh, he also played um, Tony Blair. Here is a sneak preview of one of the tracks. It is called Tutu, Mia, Tutu, Warrior, Tutu, Father, Tutu, Bishop, Tutu, Friend, Tutu. Desmond Tutu. Desmond Tutu. Archbishop. Desmond Tutu. 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 Desmond
to do. Archbishop. You fought AIDS and homophobia, poverty and racism, AIDS and homophobia, poverty and racism. John, I'm a pioneer. I don't look backwards. I move forward. My last album had the lowest bass line ever recorded. So what? Brian, if you don't do what they ask, EMI are threatening to cut the deal and ask for their money back. What? They can't do that, can they? Yep. Can you see now why this is a bit of a crisis? Yes. It's that time of year again when the Prince's Trust get together to raise money for the young and disaffected, and I'm not talking about his children. I've decided to donate some old stage costumes that I wore in the early days of Thoughts to the auction. Classic costumes such as the Giddy Fox and the Mole Man Snare. The Mole Man Snare was made of paper mache and reinforced steel and was really very, very heavy. Inside the costume, it would get very hot. When I came out, I smelt like a mole too. The suit was lowered onto the stage by a small crane driven by my old friend and roadie, Lenny Moncton. Lenny is sadly no longer with us. He passed away in 1976. He died of a particularly strong roll-up. OK, as you know, musicals are making big money at the moment. Queen Abba, Rod Stewart, the Bee Gees have all had smash hit musicals written for their music. This is something we could do. Yeah, I had an idea for a rock opera quite a while ago now. Uh, it was based upon the world's oldest musical instrument, which was uh, a Chinese bone flute. It was called a Fika Tunis. And the sound of this flute was so beautiful, it would make a tiger burst out crying. And any woman that heard the sound would instantly fall in love with the blower, regardless of what they looked like. Do you know what, John? With this power comes a terrible price. It brings death and destruction to whoever plays the pipe, because it was carved from the devil's own pelvic bone. So the Chinese buried it uh, deep beneath the ground, and 10,000 years later, it's dug up by a troop of Morris dancers uh, near Ashford in Kent. Uh, they blow it, and they all die. How do they get from China to Kent? Time travel? Um, continental drift? Maybe could be dragged by worms. Welcome to Poggle Studios. I'm speaking at a very strange time. Uh, we were lucky enough to have Rafael Santa Cumas, the chanting vocalist from Salvador, and of course, one of the greatest voices in the world, to come over here to Poggle Studios and perform on a track of my forthcoming album. Although he may not have been known to many fans of Western music on the world music scene, he is right up there with Lennon, Sinatra, and Michael Bublé. Raphael's a very interesting character. Uh, he, he's never left his village, he's never flown, uh, he's never read a book, or seen snow, or eaten cheese. We spent four days here on Poggle Island, my studio on the water, and we had a fantastic time. <sighs> Sadly, he was taken ill uh, yesterday due to an allergic reaction to some pickle he ate, and I'm afraid he died very early this morning. So I'd like to dedicate the next four seconds to the memory of this great musician, Raphael. This is for you. Till next time, this is Brian Pern.